Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com. Now, as you know, when it comes to thermal paste, there's so many different brands out there, all claiming to be the best. We have Gelid with their GC Extreme, you have Cryonaut with their Thermal Grizzly. The one that we kind of always favor has been Notua with their NTH1. Well, they've actually made it a little bit better. We've got the NTH2. So I've always been a firm believer in using the NTH1 and it's primarily for one reason. It offers fantastic results while also being easy to spread, easy to clean, that kind of stuff. So what Notua did is they actually announced on Twitter the other day that they've kind of released a new product called the NTH2. And that apparently, as you'd expect, is one number better. So it's gonna be a better product. So they sent some over, but they also sent, sent over some other new products that they're, that they're gonna be bringing out to the market. So if we open this up, we can see exactly what we get inside. So they haven't kind of dismissed the NTH1, they have got some other stuff going on with that as well. So NTH1, if you remember rightly, uh, anyone who, who has kind of used it in the past, you'll find that it actually came in probably the most unnecessary kind of packaging you could ever get for thermal paste. It used to come in like this blister pack. It was about this big by this big, just to put um, essentially a tube of thermal paste that was this big. It was just too much. So they've actually changed that now and put it in something that's a, a little bit more kind of subtle. I still actually believe that maybe this is, I don't know, kind of too much. I mean, it is cardboard. The other one kind of had a plastic, which uh, especially in England isn't actually recyclable. Um, but literally all this packaging for, again, a tiny little syringe. I, I do feel it's just a little bit unnecessary. Hopefully they kind of take that feedback on board and do something about it. But it does give you a bit more information now. So you get your usage instructions. So this is actually really cool because what it does is it kind of goes through the different sockets that are available and what kind of method they believe that they've kind of trialed out that is going to be the best. So if you are going with uh, Intel LGA 1150X, then you should use one dot with a three to four millimeter diameter. If you're going AMD, so AM4 or uh, Intel LGA 20XX, so that would be 2066, uh, one dot with four to five mil diameter. So slightly bigger, obviously it's slightly bigger IHS. If you're going big, which is AMD Threadripper, uh, so TR4 or LGA3647, they actually state that the best method in their testing is gonna be nine dots with two millimeter diameter and four dots with three to four millimeter diameter. Some people kind of do, you know, the, the cross, the Union Jack, all that kind of stuff. So essentially nothing else has changed. Uh, these are exactly the same size, but yeah, 3.5 grams. But what they've also done is they've released uh, the 10 gram model. So if we open this one up, because some people are kind of asking, you know, for a little bit more. So again, same kind of packaging, but this time we get a slightly bigger syringe. So you can see the difference. This is gonna be handy for people like reviewers who are constantly changing stuff, very much like ourselves. Now, that's all well and good, NTH1. The, the thing hasn't really changed. You just now have a slightly bigger model, slightly different packaging. So they are kind of going down that route of, you know, making things a little bit better. But what we've got now is NTH2. So NTH2, they are doing exactly the same and having two different sizes. So what we have here, uh, packaging pretty much identical. But what we have here is the NTH2, 3.5 grams, so uh, we have that. With the NTH2, they do actually give you some cleaning wipes, which is another new product. So this is called the NACW1 cleaning wipe. These are always handy because generally when I've done cleaning in the past, I have used some trusty toilet paper and some isopro alcohol or a J cloth or something like that. So it can get a little bit messy if you spill it and drop it, you know, it can be, a, you know, not great. So cleaning wipes are very much, you know, needed. You get a cleaning wipe. You get a cleaning wipe. Everyone gets a cleaning wipe. Want a cleaning wipe? I have a cleaning wipe. And he caught it. <laughs> so we have some cleaning wipes. Uh, so these are gonna be really handy again. Consumers, I don't think are going to require them as much as what um, kind of a reviewer will, but for yeah, people like us, for reviewers, um, really, really handy. But the main star of the show is gonna be the NTH2. And again, they've brought out a 10 gram model. Um, I've made an absolute mess here, but what we're actually gonna do today, and this has been kind of the longest intro ever for a product that is quite simple, is I've got a test bench behind me. I'm gonna drag it over here. It's my lovely janky test bench, which features 
kind of, you know, a custom loop with quick connects and stuff. It is really janky because of the size of the radiator and mainly the test bench that I'm using it on. But we're going to do some tests with the NTH1 and the NTH2. Uh, and also maybe show you, you know, how effective the wipes are at actually getting the thermal paste off. So we're going to be doing that and then seeing, is there any reason if you're a firm kind of, you know, user of the NTH1, which is that one, the NTH1, is there any reason to upgrade to NTH2? And if that is the case, and there is, you know, a primary reason if it's dropping your temperatures, even by a couple of degrees, is there still room in the market for NTH1? So let's get the system over here and I guess, you know, get it tested and see what it does. Okay, so we're all booted up and as you saw in our wonderful, sexy, amazing looking montage, hopefully, that all comes down to editing. So if it's bad, I'm gonna be blaming Matt, the cameraman. Um, but what I've got is everything set up now with the NTH1 paste. Now, when looking at the temperatures, we are gonna be running Prime 95. I've put a slight overclock on here, only to 4.5 gigahertz, just so I can pump through enough voltage. So I've got 1.288 volts, um, just to kind of give us a little bit more heat. So what we want to be looking at is obviously CPU temperature. We want to be looking at the max. At the moment it's 37 degrees at idle, but it is actually currently sitting at 31. There's a bit of fluctuation. Then we want to be looking at the cores as well. So if I now run Prime95, we can have a little look at kind of, you know, how this takes effect. So we can see the CPU has already gone up to 50 degrees and all the packages are kind of, you know, around the same sort of 52, 51, 49, that kind of thing. So I'm going to leave this for sort of 10, 15 minutes and then we're going to see exactly kind of where it goes. We are also, uh, if I show you, we are also monitoring the temperature in the room as well so that we can make sure that all of our testing is as consistent as physically possible. So at the moment it's 22.6 degrees Celsius in here. So you can obviously work out delta temperatures and everything from there. But yeah, let's sort of see what results we get in about 10, 15 minutes time. Okay, so we've run all of our tests and I've now closed Prime95 so it doesn't kind of keep creeping up because we are running it for a certain amount of time. Now the results we want to be looking at is the CPU at 62 degrees C as well as the package at 64 degrees C. Uh, obviously the cores are going to vary on our i9-9900K as you can see anywhere between kind of 53 and 64. So these are the results that we've got. We're now going to use Notua's kind of handy, therm I want to say thermal wipes, They're cleaning wipes we're going to use that clean everything up and then get the NTH2 on there and see exactly how that fares So we've actually done all the tests uh, already in the purpose of kind of saving time. So when we look at it again, same setup, we've got the i9-9900K, clocked 4.5 gigahertz with 1.3 volts in it. Uh, the CPU only actually got to 53 degrees, which in the previous test was uh, 62, I think it was. Uh, and then we've got the package at 55 instead of 64. And even just across the various different cores of the processor, you can see nothing really went above 54 degrees. Only two of them went above, uh, went to 54. So essentially what we've got is much, much better results from um, the NTH2 compared to the H1. So the general takeaway from this is, is the product worth it? NTH1 versus NTH2. As I said at the beginning of the video, the NTH1 is probably my favorite thermal paste. And the NTH2 is just kind of built off this success of that. And I don't know if you could actually make it out earlier on in the video, but this flowed out of the syringe so much easier than the NTH1, which maybe that's down to sort of, you know, the amount of micro particles in there and how viscous the actual fluid is. But it seems like they've taken the NTH1 and just made it so much better, which I actually thought initially was quite impossible to do. Now, pricing is obviously a key important thing. So pricing for the NTH1 in their larger tube sizes, the 10 grams, you're going to be looking at about £13 in the UK uh, for the NTH1 compared to £21.99 for the NTH2. Admittedly, it comes with three of the wipes for free included. 
and it's kind of the general stuff that you know this will last five years there's no break-in period uh, the way that it conducts is the same as the NTH1 so it's still everything that you'd expect from the NTH1 fluid um, spread whatever you want to call it so it is a little bit more money and from Noctua's kind of internal testing they said that they had about a 2.1 degree difference well we managed to get quite a little bit more than that so obviously every test bench is different we're doing it under a custom loop they probably did it under their own air cooling but it just goes to show that there is an improvement and if I had to honestly recommend one if you have the extra money and you are planning on overclocking maybe running it under a custom loop that kind of thing then the NTH2 is definitely going to be the one to go for let me know in the comments section below which one you guys would actually go for the NTH1 being slightly cheaper but still a fantastic product or the NTH2 which is just mind-blowingly good but it is that little bit more money I'm really actually keen to see what everyone would kind of go for. Other than that, uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know exactly what to do, and I will see you guys in the next one. See you later. Bye-bye. Also, before I do go, let me know if you like this type of video. We've kind of done everything a little bit more handheld, not using the tripod as much, not scripted it as much. Let me know if this is kind of the types of videos that you want to see moving forward. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.